Yo, what it do, folks? Yeah, it's your boy, the host, Wolf of Crypto, man. Welcome back to another episode of the Crypto Millionaire Journey, folks. And, ooh, yeah, if you've been watching the market, it, it took a it took a nice huge dump. Curious enough, uh, it looks like it's somewhat recovering, going back up. I mean, I'm looking at Bitcoin, Ethereum, some other coins. Seeing some green here, folks. Seeing some green. Um, curious to see, you know, hey, is this or was that, you know, was that the bottom price? You know, a lot of people are speculating. I know one thing. Uh, there's a lot of coins on sale here, and some of my, some of my favorite coins are actually on sale. Um, but yeah, we're just gonna talk about the market today, how the journey is about to possibly evolve here in the next coming, boy, maybe weeks to months. Um, man, got. I would say like a long list of projects that I need to go ahead and look into, possibly put some money into, but back to the market, some of these coins, obviously Ethereum being on sale uh, right now, currently at what, about 2600 BNB, hey, BNB on sale to my uh, BNB on the 500, I know that thing was like at like once upon a time, six hundo. Cardano did drop under a dollar, um, back at dollar eleven. Solana, obviously, it's going back up, getting back to that hundred dollar range. It was actually pretty cheap. I was I was watching that one closely to see if it would go. Um, what was it? I think it got to like eighty bucks and some change. Somehow, I'm still trying to figure out why XRP is still top ten. I mean, it is under a dollar, but I actually have heard people making money off that. Them boys at Luna, that boy was cheap right now. $64. Yeah, 64 folks. Um, definitely will be looking to tap in, get some Luna. And I'm talking about like full Luna. And obviously try to uh, yield something, especially on some of those different protocols on the Luna blockchain. This one's interesting here. Dogecoin. Most boys that good old Doge. People that love Doge. It's at what? 15 cents. Uh, I'm curious to see if this thing even moves back up. I know a lot of people. And I'm talking about a lot of people were. Were hype beasting this one. Uh, they were on that Elon Musk train. Mark Cuban train. All those other big time influential whales that were saying hey go buy uh go buy that doge yeah you bought it didn't you polka dot you know took a little bit of a dump it's currently at 20 bucks avalanche it's on sale currently at 70 bucks matic man matic's been doing some things even though it was down it was up 15 percent today yeah that polygon need to work my polygon bag as well a lot of projects. That's the one frustrating part, folks. There's a lot of a lot of blockchains out here. CRO, Cryo. It's at 42 cents now. Got down to like what 33, 34. Definitely want to buy some more of those. Um, I'm actually looking to get to that next tier. Yeah, uh, about 30,000 short from that. Ooh. That next tier, I forget what color it is. It might be that white, John. Cause I know the big boy, that four hundred thousand one. That's that's that city in black. But you are getting eight percent cash back. I believe. Uh, let me see. I believe. Yeah, I believe the next tier I go. I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy that. Was it? I think it's five. Cause I think right now I'm on three. If I'm not mistaken, I'm on three right now with the jade and the gold. Next per, uh, tier is five. Cosmos. Still doing well. Actually just started to explore one of their protocols on the Cosmos blockchain, Osmosis. Um, looking forward to seeing how that little experiment goes. Litecoin's down. It's recovering a little bit. Chainlink. Oh, my gosh. Chainlink's on sale. I want to buy a lot. want to buy a lot. It's currently at $16. 
Um, and also, got a couple places you could probably put chain link. Go ahead, use my interest. Um, but yeah, chain link. Wow, well, I'm just Uniswap. Mm, Uniswap took a bit of a dump too. Uniswap was like eleven dollars. Uniswap was as high as what, like twenty, twenty bucks plus. I'll go under a dollar, but still some nice recoveries. Like I said, there's some nice recoveries today um, that I'm seeing right now on the market here. Mana is doing solid, recovered pretty well. I mean, we're talking about folks here, like anywhere from like, you know, 2% all the way up to like, you know, 9, 10%. Some of these are up like 15%. Uh, so again, it, like I said, it's going to be really interesting to see how this particularly plays out. Because uh, obviously if you've been in the freaking space, you know, yeah, we, as far or as fast as we go down, we can go just right back up as quickly. So, I know I'm looking at, what is this, Helium's up 21%. Um, Sandbox is up, Filecoin's up. Like I said, there is some there is some green here, folks. Tezos, is doing solid. Pancake, man. GRT's really cheap. Uh, Pancake is dirt cheap. I mean, that thing dropped tremendously off the face of the earth. Curious to see. Will it go back to its glory days? Um, yeah, GRT, what, 42 cents right now. I know GRT, I think, got, I think if I'm not mistaken, I think GRT got to a, to a dollar. I got to look at their historical data. Uh, Gala's up 18%. Uh, yeah, folks, Engine's up 11%. Neil's still hanging around. It's up a little bit. Uh... Amp quant, like I said, there are some heavy, heavy gainers here. I mean, you keep going down, you start to see some 10 percenters, 12 percenters that have fused a freaking 30 percent. I know this NIM has fallen out the top 50. Looks like that might not recover and get back up there. Like, that's how I always try to. Explain to people some of these coins you'll see them in like the top 50 top whatever and the next thing you know they they falling out <laughs> they falling out the race looking at sushi swaps sushi swaps barely hanging in at that top 100 mark uh it it, it took a it took a plunge that bad boy's down to four dollars and sixty six cents um bank is up six percent i actually need to do a couple projects that are actually on Bancor. Um, but man, as hard, like I said, I mean, because what was it? I think it was about, I'm trying to remember how much money actually disappeared off the market. I think it was like a number that was like somewhere around like 300 and I think 83 B's, billions was just gone. Just gone. Um, but like I said, it's, it's nice to see some recovery right now. I don't know if we don't. I don't know if this is a pump fake. I mean, Bitcoin's back almost at forty racks, and that bad boy guy's low. I think it's like what 32, 32, 33 around that range. Um, so nice to see that's you know doing a little some some, and then also too, folks. Um, this is another thing I want to kind of talk about as far as like my experience. Now, compared to back then when I first was just starting and kind of really just focusing on, I guess you could say, one aspect of the space, which was, you know, the traditional trading and investing. But there was a time and point where something similar like this, I mean, obviously back then we did end up going to a bear market for about two years, but something similar did happen as far as, um, the fact that, you know, when we did have these down days and you're looking for some some ways to make some money and maybe you don't want to look at charts all day. Because I'm not going to lie to y'all folks. Sometimes that can be a little, little, little bit much. All those candles and you know all the technical analysis you're doing, it can be a little much. Sometimes you just want a little break, right? Well, if you want to break, what are some other ways to you know possibly bring in some type of yield of type of income off one of these coins and that's the difference in today today see and obviously 
probably back then some of these things were maybe let's say quite developed yet, which is obviously understandable. But I do know for one thing, um, EMT or not should I say EMTs, but liquidity pools. I think my first go round when I was first in the market exploring. I think that particular aspect of things, that space was a little bit intimidating to me. Um, just for the fact that I didn't really know how to really work it and figured, you know, you needed some bags, like some heavy bags to really actually see a difference. You know what I'm saying? See a nice little, like nice little passive income coming in. Um, and obviously now we got these NFTs and guys say EMTs seem like they are evolving at a speed like no other, and obviously you got DeFi, which is, you know, instead of just taking a little bit of risk with the liquidity side, you can go ahead and just stake them bad boys, stake a single asset, whatever it be. Um, so that's kind of the transition that I made this go around when everything just kind of started to, you know, like I said, take a dump. Um, I was like, let me go ahead and solve date, wait for the market to kind of, Correct itself, figure out, you know, hey, what what is the bottom? Where are we at? Or are we starting over? Like, you know, what what's going on? Um, but with liquidity pools, obviously, you guys do have experience in that department. You know, you are still getting some type of daily income from that, whether it be two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, fifty dollars, hundred dollars, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So now do got some money involved in that space, so even though as things are going down, markets are dropping, we're still bringing in something. Something that could be leveraged to maybe go buy something else. And as I'm holding these different NFTs or participating in these different liquidity protocols, trying to yield that you know daily interest, gives me a little bit more leverage as far as, you know what, I can use this. Obviously, I can go back. Increase that original position size, or if I want to convert into a stable coin, let me go buy an actual coin I really want for long term, whatever the case may be. But you have that flexibility to be able to do that. Um, and that's something I'm really trying to do in these current market conditions. Because let's, let's just say, you know, Bitcoin goes back down to like the 32, 33,000 range, whatever, because it's being everything's going down. I would like to establish myself where I am making a target number, a passive income coming from multiple uh, funnels, where we hit this target number at these current market positions, and then we're good as we're going up. Because even though I'm making this currently right now, we take a little bump up in the market, those numbers can change. And then that's something for me, I think, where, as I was saying before the show even started, or the journey is going to start to evolve a little bit more uh, because obviously I'm involved with a lot more compared to probably those first couple of years where I was just, like I said, trading and investing. That was it. Just trading, investing, trading, investing. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, you can make some good money. I know people that make good money. People make good money out there. But like I was saying, sometimes you just don't have it. Maybe you're not in the mood, like I said. Looking at them charts all day, tracking stuff down because the market doesn't close. It's up at 24-7. So sometimes you want a little change of pace. And I found that with quitting pools and NFTs. And I think, because right now, if we were to probably like, I would say what, tally up the numbers, crunch the numbers, at least current numbers of where I'm at, potentially daily just money that's just coming in, sitting in the wallet. I think we're around like, what, 50 bones? Around 50 bones. We want to get that to 150 bones, like I said, in these current market conditions. Because I think as everything progresses, I think that number is going to change. So even though it might be it might be 150 at these current conditions, right? Then it might be, it might be 250 at another level. Maybe 350, 300. I don't know. I got to wait till we get there. But it seems like a good idea now to go ahead and establish that here. These price ranges. Like I said, if it goes down even more, all right. Go ahead and establish those. Like, 
couple of my favorite projects like the Star Atlas. Uh, you know, they they drop tremendously. But well, if you're earning uh, what ten bucks of their token a day, what it could be, because they still got developments for their project. That game is it's a while. It's a while before we gonna see it and actually probably play it. So that's another long term development. But again, folks, if you haven't had a chance to explore into these liquidity pools, some of these staking farms, um. Or finding some of these NFTs, they're just gonna, you know, give you some passive income. Uh, I would suggest that you guys look into alternate ways because what's kind of cool about this now is if I'm able, or I should say, when I'm able to go ahead and get this target number, it's gonna just help me out in the long run as far as trading goes. Because you know, obviously, for me personally. I've always had certain numbers where I want to trade with. And, you know, because there's different markets. You have the futures, leverage, all that, margin trading, all that stuff. Now, let's just say I have a system in place that's going to go ahead and give me some daily funds. Now I have more buying power where I can leverage that. Where some of these prices we know, like, oh, man, we know, okay, this, this is a low for this particular coin. Hey, what if we did set up one of those big, long future positions? Because I've seen other people do it. And, you know, some have cashed out, some haven't. You know, it's just it's the way the market, man. It's the way the game is played. But that's something that going forward, uh, that's something I'm looking to accomplish. Is to always have liquidity, man. That's, that's something that I have learned um, during the times of when the market's going down, going up. I mean, when you have liquidity on hands at all times for anything, whether it be an investment, you know, try to trade, whatever you're trying to do in the space, it's good. And that's where stable coins come in to play. Uh, for me, especially right now, um, at this price range, taking some of the profits out, putting them into a stable coin, even though. Whatever stable coin I'm putting it into, most likely USDC on Solana. You know, it could be Binance USD on you know Binance. But the idea behind it is, if you can have some of your profits going into a stable coin, building up that pot, that pot. Let's just say it's collecting some type of interest on it while it's sitting there. Um, now, what I've learned, instead of maybe always you know withdrawing these are stable coins hey man this lending and borrowing stuff man that's something else y'all gotta get up to par on too because that thing does come in handy um i've actually done a little bit of that myself uh during these last couple of months is the fact that you know i'm supplying some collateral and i'm just borrowing off of it and paying it back as i see fit and i'm still able to keep my crypto think that's something that I probably didn't quite grasp at first, but now I'm like, oh, okay, I see, I see. This is probably what some of the, you know, big wells, you know, big time guys are doing, I'm assuming. Um, I seen, what was it, uh, some company is, I think it was Milo, it's going to allow you to uh, put your Bitcoin as collateral to go ahead and get a loan for a house, Woo! It's changing the game, folks. Cause I ain't gonna cap to y'all. I'd rather get a loan on my own freaking crypto and go ahead and use that to go, you know, purchase a, I guess you could say, a real world item or whatever. Um, cause that that changes the game, folks. And I even saw a little bit yesterday. I was reading up on a protocol that's even looking into being able to use NFTs as collateral. Could you imagine? NFTs, folks, using them as collateral, going ahead and get some liquidity for them. Ooh, adding more utility to them NFTs instead of having to sell them. Because I ain't going to cap to y'all. Man, if I don't got to sell it, I'd rather borrow off of it, man. Because you just never know with some of these projects. I mean, and I'm talking about like them good projects, not those ones that are rug pulls and, you know, they disappear, yada, yada, yada. 
on top of my projects that are actually going to be here, you know, in the meantime, and actually going to do something. So that's something that, again, y'all got to <laughs> I gotta look into this, man. All this stuff is out here for y'all to go ahead and look into research. I always say this, do your own research, man, because um, when you figure out some things that, you know, particularly work for you, from that point, you just try to boost it. And liquidity pools, staking, the mining, uh, you know, that's something else I want to start to get into a bit more because my helium miners, them things are doing some things now. Got them things hooked up, about to buy me a bobcat miner pretty soon. Um, but yeah, folks, again, take advantage of the market right now. These market additions, they could last a while, they could not last a while. Like I say, I remember, you know, a couple years ago, we was, we was in that bear market for two years, Mike. That thing was not fun, it was not pretty, it was ugly. But you were still able to make some money if you knew where to go. Um, that being said, let's go wrap it up, man. For this episode, at least. Uh, as far as some episodes that are coming out in the near future, what you guys can expect, I would say it's gonna be really heavy on the NFTs. Uh, found sheesh, a couple of projects that I'm currently involved in right now along with some future projects that are going to drop in the next couple of weeks slash months. Uh, so expect a lot of NFTs being being talked about on the show. Probably some different protocols as well. Um, I might even dive into, uh, obviously I'll update some mining because I actually found some other ways to mine on some different um, platforms. So not just Helium. Also, too, uh, your <laughs> your crypto banks. Uh, there's a couple of ones I used to use early on before, you know, they got, I guess you could say, like a bigger community, a lot more users. Expect to hear about those in up, some upcoming future episodes. Might get some more guests on here as well. But I appreciate y'all tuning in, listening to the podcast. Hope y'all. Are learning something. Hope y'all, like I said, hope y'all make some money on that. So I'm trying to give y'all some some good calls, man. I know if y'all listen to the episode of Turned Up Tiki's, and if you're able to go ahead and get you some of those, that that particular project's doing well. Same thing with We Are the Walrus. Um, they actually got a couple updates that I'll be talking about here in some future episodes. But nevertheless, this is your boy. The Wolf of Crypto. Y'all will listen to the Crypto Millionaire Journey. Until the next episode, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Be safe. And always remember, don't invest what you're willing to lose. Peace.